Hey, what's up guys? Zen Boro here again, and today I'm going to be talking about Francis Ford Coppola's adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, it's just called Bram Stoker's Dracula for if you want to search for it. It's obviously based on the novel by Bram Stoker, who was an Irish writer towards the end of the 1800s. Um, if you don't really know much about the novel Dracula, he wanted to write a horror story and he based the vampire account on someone he knew personally and that someone is very authoritarian. He didn't really base it on the historical Vlad that came later, so that's the short little history lesson that I know. And Coppola probably did the most faithful adaptation of the novel. Of course, Coppola added his own spin to it. For example, Stoker didn't know anything about the Romanian um, warlord hero. He, he Different perspectives on the man, Vlad Tepish, who was the son of Vlad II. And his name, Dracula, means son of the dragon. And it also got converted. That word, Dracul, also converted in to mean uh, devil. So yeah, there's a, a lot of history behind the term. But Stoker just stole the word Dracula and thought it was like a cool name for an, an undead, blood-sucking monster. So yeah, in this film... We have Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker, Renona Ryder as Mina Murray slash Elisabetta, which is Dracula's betrothed who committed suicide in the film. Gary Oldman is Dracula. And we have Anthony Hopkins as Abraham Van Helsing, the, the doctor slash demon hunter who has a vast knowledge of occult creatures and demons. So, yeah, I feel like I've talked a lot already, but and I feel like I've written a lot in my review. So, one of the things I did want to say about this movie is that it kind of reminded me of the old Nosferatu film in, I forgot the year, it's like 1920 or 1921. But uh, that famous overused scene where the vampire Nosferatu like creeps up a stairwell and all you see are like the shadows against the wall. Coppola makes some, uh, makes tributes to that. For example, I mentioned this in my written review as well, that the shadows that Dracula casts are out of sync, or he doesn't have one at all. For example, like, vampires don't have a reflection in the mirror. So his shadow is looming and large, and it really reminded me, like, I really felt Coppola was throwing his hat off to the history of vampire cinema with those scenes where the vampire is this otherworldly figure that disrupts the rules of physics and all that. And I think that's one of the film's greatest strengths is is like the visual language is just top notch. Now as far as um, like Keanu Reeves is acting, uh, it's kind of bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you play a good John Wick, and yeah, this this was not Reeves' high point. So, yeah. And the other thing is, uh, I don't know, I just like the makeup and effects in this film. There's a scene where uh, Dracula turns into this monstrous bat, and kind of reminds me of like horror monsters and video games like Castlevania and uh, I don't know I, I'm a sucker for that sh for that stuff so that's just my own biased opinion about the movie 
Uh, feel free to disagree with me. I know with this film, some people didn't like it. When I was young, I was a teenager when I saw this film. I only watched it because there were there was boobs and Dracula. So, but watching it again, and now I'm 29. Um, it's a really good film. It tells a really good story about like desire and passion and death. And uh, like, oh, love is stronger than death. It's kind of a nice twist on that theme. So yeah, check it out. Bram Stoker's Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola. Um, be sure to check out our other reviews at the Cinehorde. And I will see you next time at the movies.